We are on the brink of war. Yet again with Venezuela. Trump in Miami gave a speech just like all the rest of our presidents, the arrogance, the, hey, we own the world and we get to set policy in every country. And we, if we don't like your president, we will just insert our puppet. And if we can't do it through bribes, through infiltrating the country, we will bomb you. And we'll call it humanitarian efforts on the United States to provide a country, the innocent civilians of that country, with democracy. Yes, we spread democracy all over the world. And Americans, where are you in this lie that you are fed over and over and over again? Okay, let's just listen to a few minutes. President Donald Trump sending a strong message that the U.S. stands behind opposition leader Juan Guaido and urged Venezuela's military to switch their support to him. Maduro responded. Otra vez. Again, generals, commanders Donald Trump again giving orders to the National Bolivarian Armed Forces. Who is the commander-in-chief of the National Bolivarian Armed Forces? Donald Trump from Miami? Who is the commander-in-chief? They believe with their arrogance and their contempt for us. They believe they own the country and Donald Trump believes he has the power to give orders and that the National Bolivarian Armed Forces will carry out his orders. And Maduro also said 300 tons of humanitarian assistance will arrive from Russia on Wednesday. However, there are truckloads of supplies from the U.S. at the Venezuelan-Colombia border just waiting to go in, but it's being blocked by the Maduro regime. And wouldn't you block U.S. humanitarian aid considering what the U.S. does with its humanitarian efforts. Wouldn't you do the same if you led a country? I certainly would. My God. Over and over and over again, we see the same old, same old. And yes, it is very upsetting to see the quote-unquote awake the quote-unquote truthers, so many supporting this crazy, immature psychopath. And I will not stop saying just that. This guy has killed even more, even more innocent civilians in other nations, more than Obama did in his eight years. But I'm going to support him. That's right. You support a killer, a psychopath. Even some are saying that God, God himself, put Trump in the White House. Are you kidding me? What kind of God do you have? And yes, of course, mainstream media, yep, pushing, pushing, pushing for spread that democracy, the United States. Mainstream media, right on it, doing all the warmongering they could possibly do to get this started in Venezuela. Let's bring Peter Brooks in on this. He's a former Deputy Assistant Secretary of Defense and Heritage Foundation Senior Fellow. So the idea, Peter, is the president was kind of giving the Maduro people kind of an off-ramp and saying, hey, listen, yeah. we're not out to get you. Get out while the getting is good. And now the defense minister says, you know what, maybe we'll hang around. What do you make of that? <laughs> That's because we're just so great. Yeah, an off-ramp. Our president says, get out while, <laughs> while it's good. Get out now. You know, we're doing the right thing. We're going to force upon Venezuela a president that you didn't vote for. And we're going to spread democracy in Venezuela. No, it has nothing to do with our taking over this country. It has nothing to do with, oh, Venezuela, those oil, that oil in Venezuela. Let's just get our greedy grubby hands. It's disgusting what this country does. 
unbelievably disgusting. <laughs> well, I'm not actually surprised. Uh, you, you can imagine, Connell, that uh, these generals, these 2,000 generals, you know, we only have like 650 flag officers in the U.S. military. They have 2,000 or more generals in the Venezuelan military. Right. But they've uh, hooked their they've hooked their wagon to the Maduro uh, to the Maduro, and uh, they're going to stay there. He's helped them line their pockets uh, through corruption and other means, including reporting. <laughs> we are such a joke. This guy is such a joke. We are. So unbelievably corrupt and evil, we line pockets all over the place, and we just do whatever the hell we want to do. And then we get on these shows, and we present this face as if we're all good and nice and wonderful. And no, we don't. We're not corrupt. Are you kidding? Uh, uh, we don't interfere in other countries. We just bring humanitarian aid all over the world because we're just fabulous and morally superior and my god Americans wow where the hell is your brain what the hell are you doing what are you doing it's disgusting at this point because it's so in our face how unbelievably evil we are and creating suffering for so many innocent people around the world it is so outrageous. Yeah, Venezuelan soldiers to guard border ahead of aid entry. Venezuelan troops will remain stationed along the country's borders to prevent territorial violations. Yeah, the United States plan to bring in humanitarian aid to alleviate an economic crisis, Trump says, all options on the table. If you don't get out now, well, it's your fault if we kill you. We're still backing Guido, an unelected president. Oh, I lived this my entire life. Baby boomers, you have lived this your entire life. And you just go on and on and on and on. Like, hey, we're just great and no problem, and I don't, I don't have any responsibility in what our government does, so I'll just sit back and watch the show. While I get to live a rather comfortable life, while our military goes around destroying other people's lives. We're getting ready. We're getting ready to do, to do a Libya in Venezuela. The military supports Maduro. Over our dead bodies, will you impose a new government? Trump. Donald Trump on Monday warned members of Venezuela's military who remain loyal to Maduro that they would find no safe harbor, no easy exit, no way out. You'll lose everything. You'll lose everything. That's your Trump. Hey, hey, I love Trump. Make America great again. You'll lose everything. Why? Well, you've heard Trump before. My rally is bigger than your rally. What did he say about uh, Kim Jong-un's uh, button, his nuclear button in North Korea? My nuclear button is bigger than yours. You've got a friggin' seventh grade bully in the White House. And this is, this is who <sighs> the right supports. Unbelievable what we have become in this country. So, now we've stated that Cuba has military personnel in Venezuela. Cuba is denying it. Um, we're just all over, you know, thrown out. Hey, whatever works for me, okay? I got an agenda and lying, you know, I got to lie to achieve my objectives here. So, they asked for proof. Cuban government, or the Cuban um Foreign Minister Bruno Rodriguez, where's your proof? No proof. We don't need proof. We lie and we do whatever the hell we want. Why? Because our bombs are bigger than your bombs.
Do you know how many people have to suffer this shit that we spew all over the world? Russia will target U.S. with new hypersonic weapons if it deploys missiles to Europe. Ah, okie dokie. Well, look, much of this is a staged play. I don't think Ms. Maduro is part of this staged play, but anybody who's not a part of the staged play, ah, you get taken out. One way or the other, you're going to get taken out. You're going to get taken out. You know, this was posted July 22nd, 2018, Military Deep State and the American Innocence. And I think I actually posted a video on this. Like fish in the water, Americans have lost the ability to notice the pervasive and omnipresent propaganda. I don't think that they don't notice it. I think that they just don't care. So I'm going to read some of this uh, just to kind of, hey, drill it home. This has been going on forever. You're going to believe the horseshit about Venezuela? Why? Because you support Trump. You don't support truth. You support Trump. Just like Obama. I support my leader. I don't support truth. I support Obama. Well, you Trumpers are just like the left. No different. Yes, we were warned by Eisenhower. And these warnings... Hell, hell, I don't know if Eisenhower was instructed to do this warning because, you know, these crazy elite, psychopathic, Satanist, crazy nut jobs. Well, we like to warn you about what we're going to be doing. And if you remain sitting watching your TV, your boob tube, and do nothing, then you have consented to your own demise. I think that is part of their, oh, well, we've got to warn them so that we don't, we don't have to live any karmic repercussions. Crazy, crazy people. Okay, but uh, while many Americans consider it heretical to question the U.S. military, none other than a five-star military general and U.S. president did just that in an extraordinary farewell speech in 1961. Eisenhower went on national TV and said, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence by the military-industrial complex. The potential for the disastrous rise of misplaced power exists and will persist, and it's persisting right to this very day. And of course, such a speech today would be considered a conspiracy theory it would be labeled as treasonous. CIA Truman. Guess who thought that the CIA had turned into an American Gestapo? Harry Truman, the U.S. president who created the CIA. He said in his biography, those fellows in the CIA don't just report on wars. They go out and make their own wars. And there's nobody to keep track of what they're up to. They spend billions of dollars on stirring, stirring up trouble. The CIA has become a government all of its own. CIA William Colby describes CIA's culture in his memoirs, Cult of Intelligence, that held itself to be above the normal processes of society with its own rationale and justification beyond the restraints of the Constitution. Since World War II, the CIA has meddled in more than 80 foreign elections around the world. Hey, but why don't we spend two and a half years talking about Russia, their meddling in U.S. elections. All these countries meddle in elections, but you couldn't understand that for two and a half years, and they're still talking about it without resolution. I still hear, I still hear on radio. Can't believe it. Steele, Dossier, Mueller, Trump, Russia. It's, it, it, you, it, it's like Americans can't even get. Don't you understand? You're hearing the same thing over and over and over and over again. Do you think maybe that that is 
it, it's it's just this it, it's part of the staged script of this play that we watch coming out of Washington DC to get you so thoroughly distracted to what is going on. We are now on the border of Venezuela, ready to invade that country. Uh, directly, hard invasion. Oh, we've been in Venezuela for two decades with our soft invasion trying to take it over. We were unsuccessful. Now we're getting ready for that hard invasion. And you're still listening to the crap that, well, you have been engineered to listen to. Stop being robots. Please, please do some independent research on your own to try to figure out what the hell is going on in this world. But if you are an American and you're sitting back doing nothing, then I'm sorry, you are absolutely 100% complicit, complicit with all of the evil that is spread around the world. Don't give me this horseshit that it has nothing to do with me. I'm not in the military doing this. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. Face it. Face it. We are all part of this. And if we can't get the evil, uh, crazy nut jobs to, to stop doing what they're doing, then we are just as immoral as they are. If you're not compelled to take some action to speak out about what is taking place, then you don't have a moral core. You just believe you do. And belief is not fact. Belief is not truth. Operations of these the CIA meddling include suitcases of cash to bribe politicians and voters, manuals for psychological warfare, sensational fake news, uh, organized mass protests, armed violent oppositions. That's what we have been doing in Venezuela. Hasn't worked. Let's go in with our hard invasion. You know, decades, decades, decades of living, you know, lies and then finding out that, oh, it was a lie. And we American people have done nothing about it because we don't care too much about lies or truth. That is the truth. I am not talking about you personally. I don't know you personally. I am talking about the collective here. Americans do not care about the truth. Most Americans don't even want the truth. They hate the truth because lying allows them to live comfortable lives, to just go on. Same old, same old. Same old, same old. Robots. Programmed zombies living out their life. Self-centered in the extreme. Not caring about anything but their own little life. Yeah. The, the released JFK files from the CIA archive show detailed plans to assassinate Castro that included exploding cigars, tuberculosis laced diving suits. William Blum has done extensive research and documented numerous foreign assassination, assassinations successful and attempted by the CIA or the U.S. military. You want to look at our history with overthrowing foreign governments. Look at this. Venezuela, right there. Oops, we weren't successful. So, now it's Trump's hard invasion. Nothing stops the killing machine in operating within the United States. Even intellectuals like David Talbot founder of Salon Magazine, editor of Time Magazine, are convinced that some from the top echelons of the CIA assassinated JFK. Ah, but who cares? That was so long ago, Carol. Stop living in the past. The phrase conspiracy theorist was invented by the CIA in 1967 to discredit anyone challenging the official narratives. 1967, the it was invented by the CIA. Call people a conspiracy theorist. If they challenge, they challenge 
the conclusions of the Warren Commission. The bullshit conclusions, the magic bullet. You have been fed. Unbelievable, obvious, obvious lies that render people like who believe that there was a magic bullet that killed JFK. Uh, you're living, what, in Disneyland? Believing the show they put on for you. The magic bullet. The U.S. arms funds about three in four of all dictators around the world. How's that for spreading freedom and democracy? The U.S. has supported and installed numerous brutal tyrants and authoritarians all over the world in the last century. Um, Suharto in Indonesia, for example, killed two million people. But hey, we love him. We love him because he was our puppet. And what did we do? Well, we got a puppet in there and Western corporations could go in and exploit the people, plunder their country, steal their resources. That's why we have now military at the border in Colombia, ready to go into Venezuela. Under Operation Paperclip, the CIA brought in numerous thousands of Nazi scientists into the United States. What did they do? They continued their experiments. And guess what? Many of those experiments were conducted upon you. Not you personally, Americans. The U.S. has trained, armed, and funded Islamic terrorists in Afghanistan, Chechnya, Libya, Syria. We wage proxy wars. And yeah, ISIS, it ain't no terrorist organization. It is the United States proxy army. These terrorist groups are trained, armed, funded by U.S., Israel, Saudi Arabia, U.K., and we use them as proxy armies. And the mainstream media reports, oh my God, these are terrorist groups, and oh, and because you're a little child, you believe it. Because children are about playing and having a good time. And you don't expect a child to do any kind of research or take any of adult uh, issues seriously. Well, that is the majority of American adults today. From 1950 to 1975, the CIA, using a fleet of planes and helicopters known as Air America, was involved in massive heroin trafficking from the Golden Triangle area in Myanmar, um, Thailand, Laos. CIA, it is the biggest drug trafficking organization out there. It is a criminal organization, the CIA. But everything that Americans are told, Americans on the whole, are told. It's all bullshit. You don't do the research to find out if it's true. It's just, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You're crazy. You're a nut job. Shut up. I'm watching my TV show. While more and more people get to suffer the consequences of what you won't believe. After the Vietnam War, the deep state in the 1980s used heroin in Afghanistan to fight the United, uh, USSR and cocaine in Central America to fight leftist leaders. CIA's Operation Mockingbird was an extensive operation to infiltrate and control all major news organizations. Over the decades, the CIA and the Pentagon have actively participated in over 800 major movies, 1,000 TV shows, to make sure that the right propaganda, right propaganda message reaches their audience. So you go, yay, I support our troops. Thank you for your service. What? You are just so selfless, you soldier. You've gone over there and you have protected my freedom and you don't even realize your freedom is friggin' gone. Oh yeah, you can get up in the morning and make your coffee, get in your car, do your shopping, do your errands, go to work, you pay your taxes, you think you're free. 
because you can then come home from work and you can turn on how many channels to watch TV and get more programmed to live yet another zombied, immoral, self-centered life. It's so unbelievable what we have become. All the deceit and fear-mongering that convinced us to go to war in Iraq after 9-11. Saddam was trying to buy uranium. He had reconstituted nuclear weapons. There will be a mushroom cloud in the United States. He had biological weapons in mobile labs. He could launch chemical weapons against Israel and British soldiers in just 45 minutes. What did we do when we found out all of this was a lie? Nothing. Nothing. Oh, Obama campaigned on, I am going to you know, bring justice here and, and hold those responsible for getting us into the Iraq war. And he comes into office and says, we can't look back. We've got to look forward. Yay! Don't want any of that messy, dirty justice stuff. Why resolve any lies in our country? Why? Because it's what we are. We are a lying, killing, grossly immoral machine at work spreading democracy around the world. Innuendos, bald lies, that's all we get. But it convinced 70 percent of Americans that Saddam was responsible for 9-11 and even the anthrax attacks and it was bullshit and still there are Americans who believe it. Go back in history, there are so many lies including the Gulf of Tonkin claim that helped the United States launch the Vietnam War. Every American should read General Smedley Butler's amazing testimony titled War is a Racket. I spent 33 years in active military service, and during that period, I spent most of my time as a high-class muscle man for big business, Wall Street, and the bankers. In short, I was a racketeer, a gangster for capitalism. Our military has never changed. It's only gotten bigger, more evil. What has changed, it is so in our face today. What hasn't changed are Americans believing or not caring about the tsunami of lies that they live in. John Perkins' book, Confessions of an Economic Hitman is another must read to understand how banks and corporations drive geopolitics, coups, regime change, and wars in the 21st century. False flag attacks, somehow it's psychologically hard for people to think that their government might stage a false flag attack. As recently de declassified documents show, the CIA had many such ideas, killing boatloads of Cuban refugees or blowing up ships and then blaming Castro, carrying out terror campaigns, their own words, with bombs in Miami, Washington, D.C., or to blow up a passenger airline with American students and then blame it on Castro uh, and buying Russian planes to attack U.S. soldiers to start a war with the Soviet Union. Shockingly, these plans got approved all the way up to the Joint Chiefs of Staff. Incredibly military, incredibly evil military we have. Thank you for your service. Yes, I support my troops. Got stopped by JFK or his brother, RFK, and they both are gone, dead, assassinated. CIA carried out similar false flag attacks, Operation Gladio, in Europe in the 1950s through the 1970s to blame the communists and shift the political landscape, the landscape to the right. Libya, Syria, Ukraine, false flag attacks were used to launch the regime change operations. Our politicians are skilled at crying crocodile tears over human rights abuses. Oh, I care so much. Boom, another bomb, another innocent child dead. I care so much, another bomb. Boom, another child dead. The bullshit in this country 
is so thick, crying crocodile tears over human rights abuses by our geopolitical adversaries. The CIA runs secret torture prisons in many countries to avoid scrutiny. We are, we, the, the hypocrisy is so, it's like, it takes your breath away. You feel it, you know, when you see it and it just goes on and on and on and you can't find any Americans who really care about the hypocrisy. It becomes a, it becomes such a heavy weight. It's like pushing you down and you're struggling to stay up every single day. Guantanamo, Abu Ghraib, all of the torture. We've got secret prisons all over the world torturing people. Ah, but we claim, huh, we care. We cry these crocodile tears over human rights abuses that we cause, <laughs> that we cause. Or we just lie, claiming Assad has used chemical weapons against his own civilians. Oh my God, look at these children. It's a staged attack. The video, all, you know, the white helmets. You see these kids getting, you know, sprayed with water. But, oh, chemical attack. And it's all staged. Actors putting out these videos. You're crazy, Carol. You are such a nut job. You won't check it out. You won't do the research. You will not be an adult. You will remain a child throwing out your fifth grade, sixth grade, seventh grade insults with all of the Americans who are trying to wake you up to what the hell is going on. No, I'm going to remain a child. Get away from me with all of your negativity. It's sickening what this country has become. Hundreds of thousands of Americans were subjected to unethical radiological, chemical, and biological, and medical experiments between 1940 and 1974. Oh, these experiments are continuing. But the U.S. military even conducted biological warfare testing over the entire city of San Francisco, also St. Louis, also New York City. Do you think our military ever stopped? No because we didn't do anything about all of these lies coming out of the worst of the worst, the evil. We've been voting for the lesser of two evil. What do you get? You get evil. So absolutely we are part of it because Americans don't think. I did the same thing. I'm voting for the lesser of two evil. What? What? Did you even think about that? No, because you have everyone around you saying the exact same thing. So you don't even question it. Question everything. Question everything. And if you don't, you're on the side of evil. You got to move from that side. Cross that boundary. You know, just to make everything simple. It is a war between evil and good. You want to be on what side? Because there's no, you can't just be sitting on the fence. You're sitting on the fence, you're on the evil side. Not with everything so blatant now. It's, look, I'm sorry. People are suffering, okay? Americans are suffering because they don't even see their own government and military attacking them. Another deeply held belief is that our elites all always hold high moral standards, value lives, compassionate. Yeah, really. Bullshit. Since 9-11, the U.S. NATO wars already cost 5.6 trillion, killed 5 to 7 million people, but clever propaganda hide or justify such atrocities. In the 1990s, half a million Iraqi children died from U.S. sanctions. Secretary of State Albright, I think it was worth it. I think it was worth killing 500,000 children to get what we wanted in Iraq. You've got psychopaths who are your leaders extremely profitable 
for the military banking intelligence complex, which uses the soldiers as pawns. 2.7 million Americans have fought in Iraq and Afghanistan since 9-11 and more than 400,000 of them suffer from PTSD. How many are killing themselves and what a price to pay. Unsustainable empire thrives because we cannot question or challenge it. In the land of the free, Americans don't mind NSA spying on them, while many assume that it's to protect us from terrorists, you naive little child. The spooks have dirt on every single American. It's no wonder that no politician speaks out against this Orwellian nightmare like fish in the water. Americans have lost the ability to notice the pervasive and omnipresent Pro, uh, propaganda. However, we owe it to ourselves to be more knowledgeable and objective in processing and reacting to information. Freedom, liberty, prosperity are not achieved and maintained through willful ignorance, blind allegiance, naive faith. On the brink of war with Venezuela. Same old, same old, the name of the country changes. That's it.